So there are some tools that are indispensable when you're on the wards in med school and some that are absolutely necessary to perform certain tests. And you can obviously, of course, use the tools that are supplied by your medical school when you're trying to get things done. But I found that having them at home enabled me to practice much more easily for my OSCEs. And so many of them are so cheap and readily available that this is something that I'd recommend you do. And a quick note to start this off, uh, I am fairly obviously wearing a waistcoat in this video. Um, I virtually always wear a waistcoat when I'm on the wards and off the wards to be fair, but the reason I wear them on the wards is that they actually have extra pockets which are useful for carrying all these things that I'm going to talk about in this video. And this is really useful because if I'm trying to do certain tests which I'll talk about in this video, um, I can have the things on me discreetly already anyway and just have them there ready, which saves a ton of time trying to find stuff. So let's start with the obvious, the stethoscope, the quintessential, the one and only, the ear on a stick. Now this is fairly obviously the sort of hallmark of clinical medicine, and you'll use it for things like checking for heart murmurs, auscultating the patient's lungs, or listening over arteries for the presence of bruies. And a really useful note, I think, for incoming medical students is probably don't buy them before you attend your course unless you found one that you really like and you really want that one. Normally, companies will come to the medical school when the freshers start and they will offer loads of deals and things like that. They certainly did for us at Warwick. The company in my case was MediSave and I've put a link to their website in the description below, but they gave us, I think, a pretty good saving uh, when we started the course and we met with the reps that came to the uni then. What I have here is the Lippmann Classic 3 in a smoke black finish, or it's, it's called, I think, like the blackout edition or something like that. So the metal is all smoked black, the piping is black, and the earpieces are black as well, leading it to be called, obviously, the blackout edition. Now, to be truthful with you at this point, I've not done anything particularly complicated with my stethoscope, but at least for what I've needed to use it for, sort of cardiac and respiratory stuff, the stethoscope, this one has been really, really reliable and I'm sure it will last me well into my medical career before I would need to even think about changing it. And what it's useful to do as well is get one that's similar to the one that all your med school friends are getting because stethoscope sharing is a thing that happens so if you're all using similar ones you can obviously get used to them. So hopefully you can see this. Again it's all black so it's sort of difficult to see in this dark room but this is a tendon hammer. Most people are familiar with these things as the device that is used to whack your knee um, to make it kick forward, but when you start preparing for your OSCEs, you'll learn that there's quite a few different reflexes that you can use these things to test, and that will include things like your biceps, triceps, and ankle jerk reflexes, to name just a few. This one that I've got here is actually the most common one that you would see probably in the UK. It's called the Queen Square Hammer, which is characterized by its mostly plastic construction, and a uh, long handle and circular head. There are quite a few different variants. Uh, the Babinski version has a sort of shorter metal handle usually. And if you're an American viewer, I think it's called the Taylor Hammer is the version that would be used more commonly there. In the UK, this Queen's Square version is the one that I'd recommend getting. They're super cheap, they're available everywhere, and it's what everyone seems to use on the wards. And as with virtually everything on this list, apart from maybe the stethoscope, it's not worth shelling out for an expensive one of these. There are expensive ones available. The only ones I have seen, which I've been tempted by, are telescoping ones, which um, have a handle that collapses down, which just makes them a lot easier to carry because they're slightly unwieldy, um, are these long ones, but really, you know, they're, they're several pounds and they are worth having. And here we have the tool that everyone loves and no one can pronounce, the ubiquitous blood pressure cuff, or sphygmomanometer, I think is the correct term. <laughs> For the nerds out there, like me, who are interested in etymology, uh, sphygmic um, refers to a pulse, I believe, and then a manometer is just a device that measures pressure, so sphygmomanometer. Now, taking blood pressure is obviously a really, really common procedure, and so knowing how to do it efficiently, quickly, and correctly is really important. And take that from a guy who isn't very good at it. And very weirdly, I'm not quite sure why this is, but under pressure, this is one of the things that a lot of people seem to struggle with, either fiddling with the valve, um, feeling that it's not quite working properly, or just getting your technique not quite right. Having one in the house, make sure there's at least one, that one of you has one so you can practice on each other 
because it will be really, really useful in the long run. And we found it. There are three of us in our house practicing for our OSCEs. Again, they're really, really cheap, but having one in the house really made a difference when it came to practicing for the exams. Now concealed in the pockets of my waistcoat, I have two pen torches. And having a small torch like this is really, really useful for quite a number of things. Most commonly, I've used one um, during cranial nerve exams when you have to check the function of pupillary reflexes. But they're also useful for things like looking inside patients' mouths to check their dentition, check the colour of their tongue, or see if they have a deviated uvula, something like that. And these are two different brands. So this one, uh, hopefully you can see, is more of a, a white light, and this one is a bit more yellow. So this one, this black one, um, came from Medisave, the company I mentioned before. This came with my stethoscope when I bought it as part of a deal, and it actually is a pen. Uh, as well. When I was preparing to make this video, I had actually lost it. I had no idea where it was, so I bought another one. This one, I really don't know whether you'll be able to see, but it has a pupil size guideline on the sides. And then, sort of, sod's law, as soon as I'd ordered this one, I then found this one. So now I have two, but I, I really don't mind, because these pen torches are really, really good things to have. And the final item on today's list I actually had in my other pocket is a small tuning fork. Now, I should say immediately that this is not what would be called a medical tuning fork. This is just a, a normal sort of piano-style tuning fork. This is just to illustrate a point. There are better ones available. Particularly the things you would notice about medical versions of these is they'd have a large flat bottom to them, and that's because of the tests that they're used for. And as I said with the pen torches, these are a staple of the cranial nerve exam um, for two small tests you do called Rinnies and Weber's tests. These tests compare bone and air conduction of sound, so you'd strike it against a surface. I'll bring it to the mic, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear that very well or not. And the other thing you would do is place it on the patient's forehead and see if the sound lateralizes to one side or another. Again, cheap as chips, and something like this, while probably strictly not the best thing you could be using for these tests, do work to a certain extent. I just keep one in my pocket because you never really know when you're going to need one. And that's actually going to wrap up my list of five medical instruments that I think every medical student should own. The stethoscope is a given, but the others really easy to find and really well worth having. And it should probably go without saying for all of these, but never ever leave them on the ward because you will not see them again. <laughs> I've left Amazon links in the description uh, for all the items that I've used in this video, just if you want the ones that I bought, but really they're all ten a penny, virtually anything you want will do. So thanks for watching guys, please take care, please subscribe to the channel if you'd enjoyed this video and would like to see more, and go and check out my website postgradmedic.com for my daily medical school diary and tons more videos like this. Take care and I'll see you around. Bye bye for now.